Hi, and, uh, thanks, to, thanks, to be, thanks to be there. Uh, I work on this paper since, uh, since many months. Uh, and in parallel, I, I published a book two, two weeks ago about responsible innovation. And I just want to, to share with you that it's completely out of date right now, <laughs> since two weeks after. Um, I'm, I'm pleased to, to deliver it. And uh, it's a completely analytic paper, so I have to, to read it a lot. And uh, we will, of course, have a presentation also to help to follow me, I guess. It will come, I suppose. Innovation. In innovation, <laughs> technology innovation, yeah. Not really responsible with me, you know, but. <laughs> um, yeah, this, um, this research makes uh, the question of management and uh, philosophical approaches. Uh, there are more or less in, line, in line with my previous research uh, in the thesis about spiritual exercises. And uh, spiritual exercises, just to, to, be, to be clear, uh, are understood as decisions, techniques, hacks to improve life. And what is the goal of innovation if not to improve life? Um, yeah, that's good. That's, it works. Great. Innovation gives birth to development for organization and takes several forms. In an economic context, always more global, competitive, innovation can only be at the core of any strategy. At the same time, the race for innovation in the world raises two questions. These questions stem off the time from the impossibility to forecast the results of innovations. Would it be successful or not? More exactly, the questions innovations raise are all about this consequence. All in the society, and not only on the economics, as Schumpeter said. The, res the concept of responsible innovation should indeed help to answer the problematic raised by the innovation. In parallel, the common acceptance of the word responsibility raised question about its use and how it could be and should be understood. What does responsibility really mean? For who? Shareholder, customers, suppliers, managers? These questions are at the core of our research. We will try with the notion of care to provide an evolution of responsible innovations. For that, um, I will not go into detail, but I have lots of uh, bibliography from innovation theories, Alter to Schumpeter's philosophy theory, from Condorcet to Sophocles, care theories from Foucault and Tronto. So I will have lots of bibliography to establish this, uh, this research. The question is, first of all, the digitalization of the world. Electronics has invaded our everyday life with the object through which communicate the digitalization of the world is becoming a major stake. And nanotechnologies are going to be everywhere, in food, in clothes, and it seems that it's only the beginning. If we consider the progress to come in the exploitation of human body, in the meantime, these new technologies or these ways to communicate have been related to development of democratic movement in the country where freedom of expression is limited. Besides medical progress support by technology, I praise, of course, by their beneficiaries. So we could study the notion of innovation by using the famous Greek derm denon. It means both the ideas of the terrible and variable of the admirable, united to set the power of opposite. Sophocles in Antigone illustrated these ideas, this example of the man who has resource, whose ingenious skill is above all expectations. He moves sometimes towards evil, sometimes towards good. But the individuals are those who innovate. They are the ones who can choose in which direction. They want to go, sometimes toward evils, sometimes toward goods, consciously or not. In this context, it is appropriate to talk about responsible innovations. It's necessary to question the role of responsibility in innovation to underline that it has a unique stake, taking care of humanity. So we determine responsible innovation three with through, uh, through three main steps. The first, one emphasizes the facts that in the world today, 
every firm is obsessed with listening to the meet their needs. Responsible innovation questions this dimension by wondering if a new need should always be met. Should a firm always launch an innovation which allows to meet a need just discovered? In other words, it's not because there is a need that an innovation must be launched. The second aspect of the responsible innovation is an obvious fact. Innovators cannot calculate, predict the consequence of the product they launch because of the challenging business environment and the increasing number of firms all of the competitors can think about is launching their last product on the market, whatever the consequence. The third and the last level of responsible innovation is knowing that it can result in new risk, which can impact everyday life and ways of life. And innovation in an area may have no consequence on this sector only. The innovation of the scientists as the innovation of the product managers can indeed impact other sectors which remain unknown at first. So it's important to make the difference also between responsible innovation and CSR. The stake of the social responsibility of the firm has in fact little to do with innovation. Social responsibility cannot highlight the specificities of innovation, not even mention its uncertain outcome. The social responsibility of firm mostly deals with the present time and the close future but also, and mostly, with what it can forecast, as Porter and Kramer said. By itself, the term of responsibility is quite complex. First, responsibility as a part of innovation. As just I said, who is responsible of innovation in terms of implementation? Who has to account for its decisions, as the Latin etymology respondere means, especially concerning suggestion? about new product or services. In other words, who decides? More and more company runs with project management team, working group, and so on, which has one first consequence, dilution of responsibility. As Beber said, we know that the dilution of responsibility in general and of responsibility as a part of innovation in particular always results in a careless assessing of consequence. We obviously feel less concerned by the impact of innovations when we don't know exactly who is the management chain decisions. Secondly, responsible innovation is often shown as hampering innovation. Innovation is characterized by development, growth, progress. Responsible is synonymous with break, slow motion, and patience. The fear of bearing responsibilities for one hacks is an incentive to wait and see policy. Should it be because of a lack of courage or because of a will to avoid problems? The third point, the third point is the common acceptance of the term responsible. For what and for whom is an innovation responsible? We could imagine a responsible innovation dedicated to the preservation of the stake of the shareholders. What is the object of responsibility? Is it the preservation of the generations to come or the current generation? Is responsibility about groups, communities, or individuals? These questions have to be raised all the more so as the word responsibility dates back to the 19th century and also cover the notion of solidarity. There is a need for responsible innovations, but the word has to be updated today. It is no longer keeping pace with this meaning. It's too unclear today. So, it's necessary to find a new concept, a new dimension, a new understanding, which could provide us with an answer to this lack of substance. This concept should enable us to understand more completely what's at stake, this, what's at stake in the relations of the individuals with himself as with someone else. In other words, the point is think about innovation, just as men whose results would be better for the individuals because it would be care take, take care of them. Responsible innovation doesn't deep enough. Taking care of individuals naturally leads the society toward a better hand. That the reason why the success to use the notion of care. This one, coupled with the notion of innovation, should enable us to reach a new paradigm. 
including a new conception of the innovator's role, and help us to set up more accurate approach of what responsible innovation should be. This paradigm could be placed under the edges of Plateau, who said in the Republic that the city should be established not only for a second class of privileged citizen, to whom the position of happiness would be granted, but so that happiness would belong to the highest number of people we can reach the wall of state. So, reformulating the Athenian, innovate care is to innovate for the city, while seeking not the exceptional happiness for a single group, but happiness for many individuals as possible, that is to say, all the city. Care can be understood as solicitude, taking care of someone or kindness. It's the universal expressions of human concern about the world we live in. This concept is used today by sociologists, psychologists, politicians, jurists, philosophers, geographers, engineers, and so on. And yet, it seems important today to question these dimensions within the managerial cycle, especially concerning innovation. If the concept of care is closely linked to the relationship between individuals, as Toronto underlines, the needs for questioning the concept also for institution. It is a consistent project because for the advocate of care infers from everyday life experiences, from moral problems faced by real people in their routine. That's the reason why we think that firms should be added to this list. At the beginning, Toronto and Fisher define the care as a typically human activity which includes everything we do as so to maintain, preserve or fix our world, aiming at living it in the best condition. This world includes our body, individualities, and our environment, because we try to mix it in a complex pattern, which is the underlying basis of life. Innovation, associated with care, doesn't completely match, of course, with these innovation definitions. The goal of innovation doesn't aim to fix the world, of our body, of course. Yet, according to this definition, the innovation care could be and possibly partly defined as enabling to avoid what the care tries to implement. In other words, innovation should not run the risk to destroy the world, the environment of individual. These definitions reveal also care is focused on the time present and innovation care the future. While care hems at taking care of the one who currently needs it, innovation care aims at meeting the future needs of individuals without forgetting to care of them. We should note that strongly correlated with ethics and with responsible innovations. In order to make it clearer, we underline that we consider ourselves at heels of Williams, whose thesis is that the basic of ethics is to be found in Socrates' questions, how should we live? So it's obvious that the purpose of innovation care is first to bring innovation back in the society. So it's as close to the people it as can be. <coughs> innovation care will consider the society within which the product is to be launched so as to enable innovation to focus on people. Care must through a collective consciousness for Tronto because all of us benefits from it. It means that it's the attention we pay to the caring of somebody else which enable the existence of collective care, the movement and the will which the other give and have us with the expressions, the preservations, coherence and the aesthetics of our lives. This issue is accurate when it comes to innovations. What do we want for our life? To define innovation care, we need to adopt a holistic approach. It means acting not only for the sake of oneself, of the firm or one nation. It means acting for the sake of these elements, but also for the sake of all the society. A cigarette producer must think, of course, not only just for the smokers, but only also for the non-smoker. A producer of domestic cleaners about the treatment of water after its product will have in contact with it and about the children playing with water. A car seller about the pedestrian of course, and the cyclists it shared the world with. The evolution 
of the paradigmatic innovation care is the resurgence of the thinking act of the application of the Kantian principles, more particularly of the universal maxims. The first one, most important here, as Kant said, act that your principle of actions might safely be made a law for the world world. It highlights the interdependent scheme, the obligation to look for the global consequence, and the fact that others in the meantime can have the same concerns as oneself, instead of a person on individual look. In other words, this principle could be the maximum of innovation care, always acting while caring, that to say bringing into line our action with an universal look on what we are just about to do. The second one is from Kant, act in a such a way that you treat humanity, whether in your own person or in the person of any others, always at the same time as an hand and never merely as a means to an hand. Here, innovation care is emphasized, as there is humanity to preserve, and it's a goal in itself. This Kantian maxim, just as the last one, tries to put individuals has a necessary prerequisite of any action. This perspective of innovation care impacts the quality of innovator. Should have, first, as we said, ability to question the capacity of innovation, of responsible innovations, and thus to come to grip with these three aspects that we just discovered. Secondly, the ability to slow down innovation it brings to line with economic, social, and society sphere, it which will be implemented. This last concerns, as just I said in the introduction, the question of spiritual exercise. This concerns naturally evolves towards self-control, which echoes to the stoicism echoes techniques. Self-control was closely linked with the notion of freedom, for the stoicians, of course. Being able to control oneself is being free from one patience, from exteriors even, and so on. Being able to control oneself for the innovator caring means to be free from the market, from the economic pressure, from the situations which should be the launch of innovations without having assessed its possible consequences. Must not to be completely unaware of the context in which the innovation was born, but one must be dependent on it as well. If the service of the product launch is really innovative, these questions are not longer accurate, as we already discovered with Apple and so on. Also being able to control oneself for the innovator care also means knowing what makes us act and launch this innovation. Why this innovation is good? Is it good by nature? Is it good for me or for others? That is the control of the innovation process in its deeper consequences. Being able to control oneself, also giving up just as the stoic masters show their ability to give up on their patience. Even if they are attractive to give pleasure, they try to control their patience so as not to yell to them. The innovative of care is a conscience, not only for them, but also for their firm, for their organization and society. They act not only in their own interest, but in the common one. If responsible innovation could assess the consequence of the community, innovation care has a positive and benevolent role to play in the community and the city, and the innovator care is the first disciple of the ethical Kantian principle, what should I do? Then, to conclude, as we have seen, kindness and care for others as key notions concerning innovation care and reproduce contributes to the evolutions of the very notion of care. Care is a combination of affectionate feeling, responsibility. From the mothers to the cleaning lady and the nurse, there are jobs and professional features linked to care. So managers and innovators should be added to this list because they are in the people in charge of individual care through the innovations they might launch. Even if we have just underlined that care innovations should know when give up of innovations, there is no denying that this first attribute is to innovate while caring at economic performance. 
care isn't responsibility. It's not the social responsibility of firms, nor the sustainable development issues. Last but not least, care is not a frame or a break of innovations. It's a process which can be articulated with it, but it's not the final goal. Innovation is a factor of performance, growth, sustainability, progress, an improvement of individual's life, which has to recover primacy. A final primacy without ambiguous meaning for innovations being first by ontology. Care comes first for organizations, leaders and innovators. Innovation care is just at the very beginning of its existence and its stance remains to be drawn more accurately so that this could be integrated to the economic models. Just as the ancient for the philosophy, innovation care is to be thought as a commitment. This commitment has to face. It can be an intellectual models, theories and speech, but also actions. Like other science, running a business and management must be integrated in this innovation care, its own development as for the wants of the individuals and of the city. Thank you.